Proverbs 5, verse number 3, the Bible says, For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, you children, depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you for bringing these guys to your house today. And God, we pray you would bless our time together. Lord, please, I pray you would take over right now, that you would just take over my thoughts, my words, Lord, and God, that you would take over each young man, his thoughts, his focus, Lord, and God, that you would help us on purpose to listen to your word so that we get something that we can use in our lives, Lord. It's hard to live for you, God, but you give us all the help that we need, all the ammo that we need to stand up against this crazy world. I pray you would please give me the right words and thoughts and spirit, Lord. Help us to hear your voice through the preaching, Lord. God, I know I can't help these guys. Uh, I wish I could, but I can't, Lord, but I know that you can. And I pray you would work through me, that you would get me out of the way, and God, that you would Speak to each need, Lord. You know what these guys are going through. And God, you know how to get them through all of it. So I pray you would please help us with that. Give us a great day, Lord. Uh, we do look forward to youth conference. We pray that your hand of blessing would be on every single part of it, God, from the from when we start the activities this afternoon to the last service, the last uh, uh, amen, as they say, Lord. We just pray you would please bless everything that goes on. We need you to touch it. But, Lord, we need your touch right now as well. Thank you for your goodness. We love you, Lord. Bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you guys for standing. We have been in this chapter for two weeks, and here we are once again going through it, basically going verse by verse, uh, seeing what this is about. Guys, in the world, I'll just start by saying this. In the world, their followers are taught sex education. And because of that, the way they live is they live in immorality, they live in perversion, and they just live in debauchery. As Christians, we are called to purity. We are called to live a life that's clean and holy in this area. But guys, many times we tell you that you need to be pure. And as I said last week, you do need to make that commitment. If you haven't yet, I challenge you to do that immediately. You say, well, what are you even talking about? I'm talking about when you're 12, 13, 14 or as early as possible, <clears throat> you commit to God that you're going to stay pure until you get married. That you're not going to mess with, with, with a woman in that way. And then when you get married, you're fully devoted to your wife, 100%. That's the commitment that you need to make. You say, why do I need to make a commitment? Because, guys, you can't go into this half-cocked. You can't go into it and say, I'll be fine. I can handle it. Listen, when you get out there, it's going to be harder than you think. Yeah. You're going to get yourself in a situation and guys, you can't wait until you get in the situation and say, oh, what do I do? Let me consult my, my notebook. You ain't going to have your notebook. You're not going to have probably your Bible in your hand. You're not going to have, you know, sermon audio to check out real quick. What did Brother Kenny say on that message three months ago? Oh, yeah. No, that's not how it works in real life, guys. Listen, temptation comes at you hard. It comes at you as a barrage. It pummels you. It comes at you quick. And guys, you've got you've to know what you're doing before the situation comes. You can't wait till you get in the situation and say, Oh, Zach, what should we do? It's a little too late in that case. Yes. The, let me just say, the three Hebrew boys, they knew they weren't going to bow before the music played. Kevin, they didn't wait till the music played and they say, What are you doing, Shadrach? What are you doing, Abednego? They didn't wait for all that. They knew that they weren't going to bow before the pressure hit. Right. Guys, if you can't stand for God at 70 degrees, you're not going to stand for him at 700 degrees, if you know what I'm saying. You've got to make up your mind before it gets tough. Okay? That's what I'm trying to say. But the world teaches them sex education, and that's how they act. We're supposed to be pure, but guys, sometimes we don't teach people how to be pure. So that's what this study is about. It's called Purity Education 101. Welcome to class. All right, here we go. We have dealt with one point in this uh, study, and it's called The Real Story. I'll just give you a quick recap of that in verses 3 and 4. The Real Story. It says, For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end, again, those three words are very key, 
is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Guys, the real story, as I've told you, is not what the TV puts out there. It's not what the billboards show you. It's not what the internet is buzzing about. It's not what social media is, go is going viral with. Listen, guys, the world presents uh, immodesty as something desirable. It puts it out there. Listen, I don't want to get crude. I don't want to get nasty with what I'm saying. But we know how it is. You walk out in the world. And guys, it's filthy everywhere. That stuff is shoved in your face. Listen, the immodesty, the temptations, the seduction is everywhere. Can I tell you, though, that's not the real story. It comes at you with a romantic appeal in verse number three. She comes at you looking sweet. She comes at you looking smooth. But what's the real story in verse number four? Her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. In verse 3, her appearance is that she comes at you sweet and smooth. But the real story is it turns out sour and sharp. You see that? Total opposites. Guys, you're expecting one thing. Listen, let's just be real about it. When you see a, a woman that's attractive, she's beautiful, she's, she's dressed immodestly. Listen, you know what your flesh says? That's what you need. That's what you want. That'll fulfill all your dreams. And you're thinking, yes, sir. That's what you're thinking on the inside, whether you're agreeing with me or like, I don't know what you're talking about. You lie. All right? Listen, you know how it is. Listen, but that's what your flesh tells you. That's what you need. Can I tell you? It's not what you need because it turns out sour and it turns out sharp and it'll cut your life to pieces. It'll cut you deep. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. So, guys, that's the real story. As we said last week, I just want to recap a couple of these things quickly. Verse 3, she comes at you with a beautiful entrance. As I said, sweet and smooth. How does that happen? Guys, that happens with them flattering you, okay? Using their words to say, man, you're so good at this. And you're thinking, <laughs> you know it, you know? Tell me more about that. Flattery. Can I say it's also a flashy appearance? Chapter 7 talks about a woman dressed in the attire of a harlot. The way they dress... Um, shows what they do and their character. And guys, I would say some girls don't know what's right. Some of them do know what's right, but they choose to go against it. But can I tell you, if they've got a immodesty problem, listen up, young man. They've got a heart problem. Yeah. They've got a relationship with God problem. It goes a lot deeper than, well, we need to fix this and fix that. They need to get right with God, and then those things will change. The Christian life is inside out. It's not the other way around. But the romantic appeal, but then the reaping of anguish. Guys, what's the end result of it? So, so you say, Brother Tom, well, what if I just don't care about this? What if I just say, you know what? That's your opinion and whatever. I'm just going to do my own thing. Listen, if I want to click on junk, I'm going to do that. If I want to touch my girlfriend, I'm going to do that. If we want to go farther and kiss and hug and all the rest of it, I'm going to do that. What's going to happen? But her end. That'll be the end result for your life. That's the way it's going to turn out to be. It'll be bitter and it'll be sharp. Guys, it'll be bitter Something that you didn't expect, and then it'll be sharp. It's a double-edged sword. Guys, because of the nature of this temptation, you allow a woman into your heart. You, she gets deeper than most things in life, okay? And guys, you allow her in. And if she's not the right kind, she can cut you deep. That's what it's saying. She's a yeah. double-edged sword. She will cut you deep and very severely. And then, I just want to show you one more thing, and we'll move on to uh, new territory. I was thinking over this message, pondering it, and you notice verse number four once again. Her end is bitter. You see that? Her end is bitter. Now, we're coming right back to Proverbs 5. We'll go to Ecclesiastes, the next book in the Bible. So go to the right, chapter 7. This is astounding. I hope I can explain this, but this is astounding. So her end is bitter. That's what we have in mind, right? You're in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Can somebody read verse 26 for me, please? Ethan. Oh, if I find more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is uh, snare and net, uh, is snare and net in her hands are ba as bands, who please, please it, God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Guys, there's an astounding statement in that verse. He says, I find more bitter than death. Hello, hello, hello. The woman whose heart is snares and nets, she's full of traps. She's trying to allure you into something. Her hands is bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. Huh. So that means if you have a close walk with God, it'll help you stay away from this kind of woman. But the sinner shall be taken by her. Guys, that just blows me, though. You can go back to Proverbs. But when it says, I find more bitter than death. Hey, hey, young man, I don't know if you've experienced this in your life. I have. 
losing someone close to me. My dad died tragically, suddenly, uh, years and years ago. But can I tell you, there ain't too much in this life that is more bitter than that. Guys, just, and I, I don't even want to think too deeply about this, all right? Because I'll get emotional, I'll get sad about it. But listen, you go on about your normal life, your daily life, and someone that you love dearly, all of a sudden, Kevin, gone. And guys, I get it. You can get all spiritual with me. You'll see them again. And that brings you comfort. Praise God that we'll get to see them again if they're saved. Okay? But can I tell you, in the moment, that's bitter. There is not too much else in this life that's more bitter than that. Than that. Okay? That hurts. That's, that rips your heart out and stomps on it. Okay? That is a deep, deep cut. And that is something that is extremely bitter to deal with. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. Is that not astounding? Hmm. So guys, that means she can take you and she can mess you up to where it's more bitter than having someone you care about die suddenly and tragically. That is stunning to me. That blows me away. But that's what the Bible says, guys. Hey, do you want your life to turn out like that? No, no, I don't want that. All right, then we got to follow what God says. The real story, guys. Verse number five, her real attachment talks about she's basically working for the devil. She comes from hell, and that's where she leads people to. And then one last thing, verse number six, lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. I threw this at you guys quickly last week. Listen, if you see a girl in church, she's dressed modestly. She looks like she loves God, and everything looks great. And you think, wow, she's amazing. And then you see her in another scenario, and something's off. I mean, She's not dressed anywhere close to the same way. Her attitude's different. She, she's violating clear things of the Bible. Hey, guys, you be careful of someone like that, and you avoid someone like that. You say, why? Because it says her ways are movable. She's a hypocrite. She'll present herself this way around certain people, and around other people she presents herself a completely different way. You know what that tells me? They're fake. Hey, guys, you don't want that. Hey, guys, you don't want to get fooled by a young lady that presents herself one way while you're dating. Then when you get that ring on your finger, she's a whole different person. You're going to wake up and say, what in the world did I do? Help me! You know, you're going to be over there. You're going to need some help. Listen, guys, you don't want to fall for that. So I would suggest to you that, listen, you take your time. You pray through it. You be thorough about it. You, you don't just go by emotion, but you really find out what the person is all about. Can I throw one quick tip at you? See how she interacts with people that she perceives um, can't give her anything back. Did you catch that? So for me, and God has given me a great wife, and I, I thank God for, for her. But you know, look at how she deals with people that can't give her anything back. Little bus kids. They're not going to pay her back. They're gonna, yeah. not going to do anything for her. Watch how they react with people like that. Guys, if they only respond a certain way around the quote-unquote important people and then other people, they treat them like trash, watch it, brother. One day she'll be treating you like trash, hmm. in my opinion. All right, let's move on. All right, the real story, number one. Point number two, the removal that's serious. The removal that's serious. By the way, guys, I give you this. This is verses seven and eight we're about to dive into. But can I tell you this? I've been in, in this study for several weeks and I think guys are learning. I think they're picking up on things. But you know, you know one thing I'm uh, a little bit concerned about? Guys just learning this, uh, this study, and then they say, I say, what did you learn from it? Man, there's some bad girls out there. And I'm thinking, that's all you learned? <laughs> hey, guys, can I tell you there's some bad girls out there? There's also some bad guys out there? Yeah. I don't give you this study so we can just look at the world and say, man. The female gender of this world. My goodness, what is it coming to? Can I tell you, that does nothing. You know what you need to do? You need to guide your life by what God says. That's why we're giving you this study. Not so you can just shake your head. And, and by the way, if you don't apply this stuff to your life, it's not going to help you whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, Ethan, if we just drive by the billboards and say, and I'm not trying to be stupid here, guys. But listen, if we drive by and say, man, look at this immodesty. But we're staring them down the whole time. Uh, we're, we're, we're fooling ourselves. Yeah. Man, this, this sinful, wicked world, but your eyes are bugging out of your head. Come on now. Mm. We don't give you that stuff so we can just say, man, what's wrong with girls? Hey, hey, you know what we're saying? Get your mind right. right. You know what we're saying? Make some clear decisions now to stay away from the wrong type of women and find God's choice for your life. That's why we're giving you this study. 
All right, and this is where we get into point number two, the removal that's serious. Let me read verses seven and eight, and we are into point number two, the removal that's serious. Hear me now, therefore, O you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Here it is. Remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house. Strong, strong instructions here in verses 7 and 8. I like this. I like this. In verse number 7, under this point, guys, first of all, you have an interjected demand. I like this. I like this. Hey, guys, he started out the chapter. You remember he started out saying, my son, attend to my wisdom. Be there. Be humble. Don't have this arrogance. He's saying you're going to get something from it. Then he dives into saying, this is what the strange woman is about, right? She comes off sweet and, 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 and smooth, but it turns out sour and sharp, and it'll hurt your life. She's working for the devil. Her ways are movable. You can't quite get a good read on her because in one scenario she acts this way, and then in another scenario she acts a totally different way. I like uh, Solomon's about to preach here. Verse number 7. What does he say? Hear me now, therefore, you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Zach, that sounds like the middle of our preaching when we say, hey, listen up. That's what he's doing. That's straight up what he's doing. He's been teaching his son for six verses, and I don't know. Maybe the scenario is his son's over there getting a the glazed look on his face. You know, I'm not talking about glazed Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm talking about you're listening, but you get this look like, you know, <laughs> and you're like, hello, wake up, buddy. Or you, your head starts to bob and you do that act like you're praying move, like act like you're real spiritual, you're over here. Mm, mm. And, then, and then after a while you're, you know, do this stuff. No, no, no. You know what Solomon said? Pay attention. This is important. He says, hear me now, therefore, depart not from the words of my mouth. He's saying, don't turn me off. Listen up. Hey, guys, can I tell you, this is important. And I know we're still early on in this chapter, but listen up. Hey, guys, this is your future we're talking about. This is the kind of family that you're going to have that we're talking about based off your decisions and your reaction to God's word. It's important. So Solomon says, listen up. The interjected demand. Listen to me. Pay attention. Don't turn me off. And then verse number eight. Remove thy way far from her. Come not nigh the door of her house. The interjected demand. And then, guys, here it is straight up. The intentional departure. The intentional. What does verse number eight say? The first word of it. What does it say? Remove! Get out of there! Hey, young man, I don't know what you're doing in your life, but if you're clicking on stuff, get out of there. Yep. If you're flirting with a girl you know is not right for you, get out of there. Well, maybe she'll turn around. No, maybe you'll turn around from serving God. That's usually yep. what happens. Right. Remove! Remove! He's saying intentional depart departure. You know what that tells me? On purpose, you get away from her. On purpose. Well, we'll just see how life works out, and maybe she'll go this way, and maybe I'll go this way. Hey, young man, we've got to be on purpose about our Christian life. We've got to be intentional. We've got to say, if that is bad for me, then I'm not going to go over there. I'm going to avoid it on purpose. The intentional departure. He's saying, remove, remove thy way far from her. And then I like this. He's saying, remove thy way. I call that the ill-advised detour. Listen. He's saying, remove your way from her. What I think that's talking about is he's saying, Rehoboam, listen up. You don't want to just find yourself near her house. You don't want to just, you're not thinking, you're just going about your day, you got other stuff on your mind, and then, wow, here we are in this situation. We're over, we're near this person's house, we're talking to them, we're interacting with them. He's saying, no, on purpose, you need to detour. On purpose, Zach, the, the, I know you got bad memories with this. I'm sorry to bring them up. But listen, when the GPS says there's a bad accident, listen, it says you can go around. You can go a different direction. You can take a detour. Guys, you know what we need to say? There's trouble up ahead. I need to go a different way. Listen, listen. What are you even talking about, Brother Tom? Listen, in school, when school starts back up, if you're normal routine, your normal thing that you do day to day is after your, your, your first couple periods are done, you go to lunch and you just so happen to sit at this particular table and it just so happens that when you sit at that particular table, a, a girl comes and sits at that table that you know you shouldn't be talking to. Can I tell you, tell you, you got to switch your routine. Yeah. You're awake, you're awake today? I'm tired. I'm tired. I hope you, you got, I hope at least somebody's awake in this class. All right. Cause I know I'm kind of out of it, but listen, you got to switch your routine on purpose. Uh, really, Brother Tom? Yes, really, Brother Tom. We've got to do these things. Guys, well, you know, I mean, every time I go to that place, she's there, we talk, I get tempted. So maybe you need to switch your routine, man. Remove thy way far from her. 
Well, I mean, you know, my routine is after the, the school day's over, I go to my locker, I drop my books off, and, and every day she's standing right there. Well, maybe you need to switch it up. I'm not trying to talk down to you. I'm not trying to act like I'm better than you. I'm just telling you, these are things I had to do to avoid certain people that I knew weren't good for me. What do you got to do in your life? Again, we've talked about this before. Guys, if you watch a certain TV show, women don't know how to dress on there, have you ever considered stop watching the show? It's good. How about this one? This is the day and age that we live. Every time I get on social media, Kevin, it just pops up. These girls with these pictures and blah, blah. Maybe you need to delete it. Yeah. Maybe you need to block them or maybe you need to delete your whole account. <gasps> I don't know if I can breathe. No, you'll be fine. Yeah. We'll get your inhaler. You'll be good to go. All right? Listen, guys, is it, is it worth it to you to have a clean mind or not? Hmm. We've got to be serious about it. I'm just saying, listen, I, again, I can't control your life. <laughs> Man, I need God's help to, to make the right decisions in mind. I, that's enough for me to handle. But can I tell you, you need to think about these things. Okay? If there's a way I can avoid that interaction, ask God to show you. And then when he shows you, depart out of there. Remove thy way. And then what does it say? Far from her. Guys, you might want to underline that too. Remove thy way far from her. What is he saying? Don't play around with this. Don't play around with this, guys. You can't get close to it. The immense distance. He's saying, remove that way far from her. Guys, he does not say you can get his clothes just like the world says. You can look, but don't touch. That's stupidity. That's stupidity. Well, well you just, you can start into that stuff, but don't get too far with it. That's stupidity. What does the Bible say? Remove that way far from her. Get away from it. Do it on purpose. Listen, again, I'm not better than anybody. I've had situations in my life. I see somebody coming, I go a different way. Why? Because I will be tempted. Why? Because they're not living for the Lord. And that will take me down a road that I don't want to go. We've got to do stuff like this, guys. If we're going to be the Christian men that God wants us to be, we've got to do stuff like this. Remove that way far from her. And the last uh, point under, sub point under this, the individual direction. What does he say? The last phrase of verse number eight. What is that saying? Come not nigh the door of her house. Somebody besides Ethan. I appreciate Ethan answering, but I'm pretty sure we all have Bibles in here. You can see it, right? What does that mean? Come not nigh the door of her house. It's a mystery, I guess. Wow. <laughs> We're just stumped. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Still put yourself in a situation where you're near the presence to where you're susceptible to fall in a trap. That's right. You know what I'm saying, guys? Don't even get close. Don't even get close. Guys, nigh means near. So he's saying, don't even come near the door of her house. Don't even get close. Take a different road. Go, to, go through a different neighborhood. Do what you got to do. Stay away from it. Well, guys, again, I don't know your, the, the ins and outs of your life, but, you know, my routine is after I get off, I always go this way home, whatever. You're walking, you're riding your bike. I, I go this way, and it just so happens to pass, and she's always there. That's what I'm saying. We need to rethink this. Don't even come the, the, near to the door of her house. Get away from it. Get away from it. You say, bro, son, really? Yes, because it's that big a deal, guys. Hey, I've had, I've had conversations with dudes in this room in years past, and you know what they told me? Oh, man, I don't know how I fell. Man, me and the girl messed around. Well, what happened? Well, you know, after school, I was bored, and uh, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and she said, why don't you come over? Okay, sure. And then we walk in her house, and nobody else is there. Her parents are not... You see where it's leading to? Yeah. What's going on, guys? We're not making wise choices. Zach, we can't, we can't, if we had a whole line of those little dominoes lined up, you know how life works? You can't, you can't start uh, tipping them down over here, and then, Zach, right before the major problem comes, we can't jump over there. No! Guys, that's not how life works. Yeah. Listen, you start the ball rolling, you start those dominoes falling. Listen, things happen quick. And you get, listen, you put yourself in that position. Listen, there ain't no man that's not gay that can handle that. 
And they got a whole different problem, all right? In case you're wondering, all right? Listen, you can't handle that. Guys, Joseph, when that wicked woman was coming after him, he didn't stay in the house. He didn't say, Miss Potiphar, let's talk about this. You don't want to do this. This is not wise for you. And besides, this is not a good career path for me. Guys, what does the Bible say? He got him out of there. He ran out of there. He left his coat, but he kept his purity. He got out of there. What does the Bible tell us? Flee fornication. It doesn't say hang around with fornication. Fornication is any type of sexual sin. So, Ethan, it doesn't say that I just hang around it. Well, I know I shouldn't be looking at this this picture on social media, but is it really that big a deal? Flee. Get out of there. And get out of there immediately. Hey, guys, after you look at it for five minutes, you fling doesn't do much good anymore, right? Get out of there immediately is what the Bible's saying. Run away quick. Get out of there. The individual direction, he's saying, come not nigh the door of her house. Young man, again, I do not know the details of your life, but where in your life are you bumping up close to? You're giving occasion to the devil. You're, you're allowing yourself to be in a situation, in a position that you know you'll be tempted, that you know you'll be weak to, that you'll know you'll be vulnerable to. Hey, guys, what are you leaving uh, uh, open and close to? And you know what? It keeps biting you, and, and you think, man, what's going on with me? What's going on with you is you keep getting close to sin, and it keeps coming up and burning you. And listen, I need God, God's help with this stuff just as much as you do. These temptations are after everybody. And guys, I've said this before. The temptations don't get easier as you get older. They get harder. I don't like that. I wish they got easier. You know? You, you uh, become an adult man. You get married and just not tempted anymore. You know, you can just walk in. Man, as a teenager, it was hard. But I'm so glad I got through that. Can I tell you, it's always going to be hard. Mm, yeah. Like, that's not encouraging. Well, it's real, though. It's right. true. Hey, you've got to take the Bible seriously. And you need God's help every day. All right. So the real story, it's not what the world pushes at us. It doesn't fulfill all your dreams. It's not it doesn't bring you happiness and joy and fulfillment. Really, it brings you bitterness and pain and hurt and a broken heart. And then number two, the removal that's serious. Hey, guys, let me ask you something. Are you going to take that removal that the Bible's talking about? Are you going to take it seriously? Hey, when God says, remove thy way far from her, come not nigh the door of her house. And I'm not picking on anybody, but Aiden, is it just going to be, uh-huh, amen, but um, good preaching. You seem very passionate about it. Aiden, did you change anything? And I think Aiden will because he's a good guy. But, you know, it shouldn't just be, yeah, that was good. That was, that was really emotional, and I really uh, uh, appreciated the passion that you gave. Are you going to change anything in your life? Nah, I'm good. Is that what it's going to be? Hey, the Bible says remove thy way. <laughs> Ethan, it does not say remove thy way if you feel like it. He does not say remove that way if you're convicted about it. But if you're not, it's cool. <laughs> hey, guys, by the way, I think Kevin sent me something a while ago from Brother Fugate. People that say I'm not convicted about something is no excuse for disobedience. Yeah. Listen, if the Bible tells you to do something, you should do it, whether you feel it or not. Mm-hmm. If the Bible tells you not to do something, you should not do it, whether you feel it or not. Well, Zach, I'm not really feeling, you know. <laughs> I mean, Brother Tom tried. He, you know, he preached his guts out, but... <laughs> It didn't affect me. That doesn't matter. It's the truth of God's word. It's not emotion. It's truth that we need to build our lives on. The real story. Purity, education, one on one. The real story. And then the removal that's serious. Hey, guys, are you going to remove your way far from her? Come out the door of her house? I hope so. And this will probably be as far as we get today. Point number three. The ruin that spreads. The ruin that spreads. So now we're in verses 9 through 11. The ruin, ruin that spreads. Notice the first word of verse number 9 and 10. It says, lest and lest. Guys, lest is a very uh, interesting word. You know what it means? It means, or else, or I like this one, or something bad will happen. So, time out. Let's put it in reverse for a minute. What was the command that we just got from verse number 8? Anthony, you remember the command that we just got from verse number 8? What is it? Get away from it, right? Remove, depart, just get out of there. So guys, you know what lest means? If you don't depart and you say, I don't need that garbage, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm a man, I can handle myself. Okay? If, if you don't want to listen to it, if you don't want God's advice and God's wisdom in this area, okay, this is what's going to happen. Lest, 
So you shun the commands, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. The ruin that spreads. So guys, if you don't remove your way, God has told us to remove our way. God has told us to get far away from it. God has told us don't even come close to these things. Get away from it. Hey guys, again, the clicking on porn, get away from it now. Now. Not at a later date. Not when you really start to be bothered by it. Get away from it immediately. Don't play with it anymore. But if you don't, the ruin is going to spread. First of all, when you shun these commands, the first thing that this passage talks about is you will have shame that's crushing. Shame that's crushing in verse number 9. The Bible says, lest thou give thine honor unto others. Now, let's just assume here this guy that uh, um, Solomon's writing to is his son. His son has some prestige, right? He's the, the child of the, the king. He's going to be the next king. Zach, he's got some importance to him. He's got some significance in society. He's got some clout. Guys, can I tell you, if he messes around with the adulterous woman, it's saying he's given his honor unto others. Guys, the shame will be crushing. You say, uh, so what is this even talking about, Brother Tom? Hey, guys, how about in the news? How about we hear every week that some politician, it comes out some scandal that they've been messing around with some woman that's not their wife or, or someone in this position or that position or they were in charge of this school board or whatever it is. But what happens? Sexual misconduct, and they lose all their honor. You thought they were a good person, a good man, and all that's out the window. Hey, guys, the same thing can happen to you. That shame can be crushing. Listen, you may, you may uh, only focus on that momentary pleasure, but can I tell you, the shame will be crushing. The consequences of sin are what are referred to here. The shame will be crushing. Guys, I don't want that to happen. I don't want it to be Zach that for years people say, man, well, Tom's a good guy. And then the, the truth comes out, the, the, the lid is blown off, the scandal, and they think, what in the world? What is going on with him? Guys, and all that's out the window. Hey, let's be real about it. You fall to this kind of stuff, you ain't discipling nobody. You ain't preaching to nobody anymore. Okay? You can still serve God, but it's going to take a while of repentance, and you got to rebuild that trust, which, can I tell you, you can't snap your fingers and get back. That takes years and sometimes decades, but some of those things are off limits now. Guys, being a preacher, if you mess around in this area, it's gone. Gone, gone, gone. Zach, I don't... God forbid any of this stuff ever happens. But God has placed, like... Like the Bible says, a fire in my bones. When I'm reading the Bible, God gives me something, and I know I need to preach it to somebody, Aiden. God has put that in my heart. He's put the call to preach in me. Can you imagine having that, and you can't do anything about it? Hmm. Well, I don't know what I'd do. I'd get depressed, probably, you know? I'll be over here. Bill Tommy, okay? You know, got this long beard. Looks like I'm on Duck Dynasty, you know? Like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. You know, I don't know what I'd do, man. God has put that in me, and guys, I've got to give it to other people. That's what God has put in my heart. That's what he's called me to do. That's one of the reasons he placed me on this earth. If I can't do that, Ethan, what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Check myself into a mental ward. That's what I'm going to do, all right? Guys, the shame will be crushing. You want that to happen? You want that to happen as Ethan gets older? Man, Ethan, good guy, and God's using him, and, and hopefully God has a ministry for him, and a lot of people get saved, and then they hear, God forbid, God forbid this happens, but they hear, oh, did you hear about Ethan Trim? All that preaching, all that honor, all that, all that, he's a good guy, and he's got a great reputation, he's, a, he's got a great testimony out the window. Guys, it's sad. It happens. It happens, it happens, it happens. It happened to Adam, the first man. It happened to David, the most spiritual man in the Old Testament. It happened to the strongest man in the Bible, uh, Samson. It happened to the smartest man, the wisest man, Solomon. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. We've got to take this seriously. The threat is real. He says, lest thou give thine honor unto others. You want all that to be out the window? All that respectability, all that, all that significance, all that influence that you have? To be gone, well, just don't remove your way far from her. Just go ahead. Go close to her house. Go ahead. It's not that big a deal, quote unquote. What are the results? It'll lead to your honor being given away, being frittered away. And let me give you one more and we'll shut it down. 
The next one at the end of verse 9, the stress can cut your life short. That's what I call it. The stress can cut your life short. It says, lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Um, you know, the Bible also says in Proverbs, it says, uh, let me find it. Though. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. It's Proverbs 28, 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Why? Why do the wicked flee when no man pursues? You know why? Because they have a guilty conscience. Kevin, they know they did wrong, and they know one day that's going to catch up to them. One day, Ethan, when they think they got away from it, that's going to tap them on the shoulder and, oh, no. Like those people that have done some crime years ago, and then one day, police department, and they're like, Ugh. not home. <laughs> Nobody's here. Yeah. You're about to go to jail. for the, That'll be your new home for the rest of your earthly days, right? Hey, guys, he's saying you're going to give your years unto the cruel. Now, the stress can cut your life short. Hey, guys, this could happen in many different ways, but I think the threat of exposure of that scandal. Hey, guys, and this will bleed into the next verse, which we'll probably get to next week. But listen, you know what some people do to keep it quiet? Payoffs, They call it blackmail. But they're so worried about that coming out. Guys, we live in the day and age, as I said, every week on the news we hear about politicians that some scandal blows up and they, oh, no. Probably for years they've been trying to keep it quiet. <sighs> Guys, can I tell you the stress can cut your life short. You're going to give your years under the cruel. Verse 9 is saying your honor is going to be out the window, first of all. And then it says your years are going to be under the cruel. What is that talking about? George, I think you will live a shorter life because of it. You following that? That's, I think that's what the Bible's saying. You're going to give your years under the cruel. You should have you should have lived, I don't know, 80 years. But because of this scandal and the worry and the stress that's just killing you, that's just uh, wringing you apart day in and day out, you don't live those 80 years. It's cut short because you've got heart problems now. You've got stress problems. Your nerves are on edge. Listen, why? Because you know one day, one day, that thing's going to come out. That scandal's going to blow up. That thing's going to hit the news. It's going to hit social media. It's going to hit the churches that, that, that you have friends in. And, guys, that news will come out. You're going to give your years under the cruel. Hey, guys, can I tell you, we barely jumped into point number three, but can I tell you, there is no way that this sin is worth it. We just look at the appealing side. We just look at, man, she looks so pretty. She looks so hot. Bro, look where it leads to. Hello? Look where it leads to. And this is not Brother Tom's opinion. This is what the Bible says. Her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Lest you give your honor unto, the, uh, uh, unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Aiden, I don't want to live a shorter life than I'm supposed to. I don't want whatever honor and respectability I have to be out the window. Well, how do I avoid these things happening? By removing my way far from her and not coming near the door of her house. Hey, guys, there are people you need to block on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. Are there, are there social media uh, pages that you need to avoid on purpose? On purpose? On purpose. Guys, I remember, I'll finish with this. I remember my dad, when I was a little kid, sometimes i get around friends that weren't so good for me. You know what he said? he said, Tom, tell them I said that you're not supposed to hang around with them. And I'm thinking, I'm a little kid, I'm thinking, Dad, I don't want to have to tell them, you know? The problem will just go away by itself. <laughs> I'm all about problems go away, going away by themselves, but they usually don't. But you know what my dad was doing? He was taking responsibility. He's saying, you, you tell them that I said so. So he took the pressure off of me as a little kid, and he said, you just put that pressure on me. And if the parents have a problem or whoever, they can come talk to me. And I'm over there as a little kid like, okay, Dad, but thank you for standing up for that. Hey, guys, God's telling you to remove your way far from her. God's telling you, on purpose, avoid these things because these things are dangerous for you. Hey, guys, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. You ultimately listen because God told you in his word. But, hey, if you need to, if you need to, and you're avoiding somebody and they say, come up to you, you know, and I'll throw Kevin out there. Kevin, it seems like recently you've been avoiding me. You know, guys, uh, and some of y'all are going to betray me on this and, and, and use this in a terrible way. But you know what? I, if you're doing it in the right way, I'd be fine with you saying, yeah, Brother Tom said so. If you're using it the right way. Because listen, if I can help you avoid something that's going to burn you, so I'm all for that. I'm all for that. And listen, 
I've had situations like that in the past. And listen, there are certain people that are not good for you. And you know it, but you've got to make steps to get away from them. Hey, guys, we should be friendly and kind and all that with people. But don't use that as an, ex- as an excuse to get close to sin. Well, Kevin, I don't want to be rude. Hey, I would rather be uh, come off as being rude to someone than to fall into sin. Right? I'm not saying we should be unfriendly to people. You can say hi to them, and that's about it. Hey, see you later. i got to go. I-, I thought we were going to talk. No, bye. You know, maybe, maybe never. Maybe never. Just walk out of there, you know? Listen, but I would rather you get out of those situations than play with them and say, well, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be, you know, harsh with people. And it leads one thing to the next to the next, and then you get in over your head. Guys, it's not worth it. The real story, the removal, that's serious. And if you don't, if you don't remove yourself from it, the ruin that spreads. Hey, this is, this is real stuff, right? That's your purity education 101.